So for some of you that are quarantined uh, or absent, I have done the basic point of the penny drop lab. So uh, if you were absent, here's what I want you to focus on. How do we write a hypothesis? So you've been taught in 6th and 7th grade to write uh, if, then, because. We are not doing that anymore. The reason is that nobody actually writes a hypothesis that way. It helps in 7th grade and 6th grade when you have to learn you know, how to do it, but, but now that we're older, we're, we're going to ditch that method and, and get more of a realistic approach. You want to write more of a testable statement, and what I mean by that is something that's safe to communicate. If you do an if-then because, you're saying if this happens, or if I do this, then this will respond this way because one reason, and it's too limited. A real-life experiment has a lot of variables that could potentially come into play. You want to limit those as much as possible, but you have to communicate uh, with the expectation that your, your experiment isn't perfect. So our sample is a penny may hold, because here's what we're trying to predict. Are we trying to predict how many drops of water we will fit on a penny, okay? So we're going to say a penny may hold up to 75 drops of water. Uh, you could insert whatever number you want because of, and the, the basis is it's, it's small, right? A penny's not very big. But if you just say it's small, that's a very vague way to put it. We know that the distance around the shape of a penny, which is a circle, is called the circumference, and that the distance across the circle is called the diameter. So if we use specific measurements such as limited circumference and diameter, that's going to give us a much better idea of why we think we can't get, say, uh, 150 drops of water, why we have to cut it at 75. So uh, that said, the, the deal is that you write a hypothesis without the if-then statement. You just say something basic to the point and specific. So when we move on, we get a bunch of different results. We took a class average. My sample average here is 19.4 drops. And so then we come up with our possible reasons why some tables and some people got different values. Well, some people had the head side up and the tail side down, so you have a different side of penny. Some people were dropping faster than others. Some people dropped from different heights. And maybe not everybody had the same drop size. So then we implement constants to mitigate that. So we could say you could have all pennies on the uh, head side. You could also have pennies from the same year. You could drop from a, a single height. You could use a, a pipette and a stand, and that way you get rid of human error. So the, the next big thing that we need to focus on for the penny drop is what do you do about the hypothesis and the conclusion? So our hypothesis, my example, was that we had 75 drops, right? So obviously we were way under that. So my hypothesis was not on point. You are used to saying stuff like hypothesis was wrong, that it was incorrect, it was disproven, yada, yada, yada. We don't want to do that anymore. There's only one way we're going to communicate whether or not our hypothesis is on point. And that is by saying it su is supported by our results or is failed, or excuse me, is not supported by our results. And the reason for that, again, is reliable communication. If you have a good hypothesis but a bad experiment, your hypothesis could actually be, you know, reliable. But if your experiment is not, then you're going to be misled to say that your hypothesis is bad. Or your hypothesis may not be good. But either way, the most reliable way to communicate is that the results support or do not support your hypothesis. It's honest. Uh, you're not saying something that you don't have any authority to claim, and you're sticking with what your experiment shows you and how you did it. That's it. So if you were absent, just uh, use these examples. Uh, you might pause the video and just write this in as an example for you. And then you just use those as... Uh, an example for the question, the hypothesis, and the procedure. The question's done for you. The hypothesis, again, write a testable statement. Um, and then for the constants, make sure that you are looking at what could be the same if we were to compare how many drops of tap water we can get onto a penny versus soapy water.
that's it.